how fast can the stories of the gospel be told? That's what we're going to find out in Mark 2. All right. So it says he returned to Capernaum. We had a fast tour of Jesus in chapter 1. So he returns to Capernaum, and it says that he was at his home, and a lot of people were gathered to hear him. I don't think this was his home. (laughs) This was the home he was staying in. We're not entirely sure. But people were coming and asking to be healed, and someone took apart the roof at the top and lowered a paralyzed man carried by his four friends to Jesus. They wanted him healed. And the roof probably came apart. You know, these were not like what we think about of roofs with planks and shingles. I mean, these are just going to be boards filled with straw on top of them. They probably were meant even to come down so you could get bigger things into the house. And when Jesus saw their faith, he says, son, your sins are forgiven. And then the scribes are sitting there and going, well, what is that? He's forgiving sins? And Jesus says, hey, why are you questioning all of this? What's easier to do? Forgive his sins or heal his paralysis? Jesus is questioning them. And he says, you know, the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he is saying it. And so then he looks at the paralyzed man and says, your sins are forgiven. That wasn't exactly what the friends were seeking or the paralyzed man was seeking. But Jesus knows the heart and knows what that man needs more than anything. I say to you, rise and pick up your bed and go home. The paralyzed man gets up and goes home and everybody was amazed. We never saw anything like this. That The way Matthew talks and the way Mark talks is a little bit different. He didn't say son of God. He says the son of man. And Jesus uses this term about himself for most times. Jesus uses the name that the Savior was given in Daniel 7, 13. So he was using a little bit different term. You also notice that Matthew will say the kingdom of heaven, but Matthew is a little bit more direct and says the kingdom of God. We'll we'll find that out soon. Next, he calls Levi, who is Mark, that son of Alphaeus. He was sitting in a tax booth. And he says, follow me. And immediately he gets up and follows him. And the scribes of the Pharisees saw that he was having meals. We saw this in Matthew 2 with the tax collectors and the sinners. And Jesus was talking to him. And why is he eating with these horrible people? And these would have been outcasts at that time. And Jesus knew what they were talking about. And he said, those who are well have no need of the physician, but those who are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners. Again, this is ESV, but he is saying doctors need a physician. And who needs the physician? We all do. There's none righteous among us. But to sit there and question people like that and put people down that they don't need to hear God's word, I don't, it's not anywhere throughout the Old Testament where anyone should have felt so proud about themselves felt so high and mighty about themselves that they put down entire classes of people. And in Matthew, we find out, he says, you know what? These guys, they're going to be hanging out with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and having meals with them, but not you. You know, he's, he's putting the smack down on them. So then John's disciple, John the Baptist, disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. John, again, was probably similar to an Essene. He was very strict in his faith. And so he would have fasted. And the Pharisees, who also were very strict about their faith, they tried to dot every I and come up with rules around rules so they don't break any of the rules accidentally. And he says, you know what? We're all fasting. Why aren't you fasting? And Jesus said to him, the wedding guests can't fast when the bridegroom is with them. And this is a time for joy. You know, they can fast when all of this is over. And then he gives the parables of the piece of untrunk cloth put on to an old garment. What will happen is, is that it, as it wears, it's going to rip the fabric even more than it was ripped for initially. No one puts new wine in an old wineskin because old wineskins get brittle and crunchy. And then when you put the new wine in it and it starts to ferment, it blows out the old wineskin. The point of these parables are new traditions, new things are coming. You can all fast when I go. 
but this is new wine and you're going to have to rethink yourself. Then they're going through the grain field. We heard this parable in Matthew as well and said, how come your people are eating grain? And we'll, we went all through this. It's not against the Sabbath. It wasn't unlawful. And Jesus had no time for him. So he talks again about what he was doing. What He talks about a time when David ate bread in the room that was meant. There was certain kind of bread that was offered to God and certain kinds of bread that were offered to the priest. And David was given, because of the dire situation, the bread that was meant for the priest. And in the end, and he says, the Sabbath was made for man, not the man for Sabbath. So the Son of Man is the Lord of Sabbath, meaning that Sabbath is about people. It is about rest. It was, I think, a gift from God. And when you're not helping people on Sabbath by letting them eat or letting them heal someone, we're going to talk about that in a minute, you're doing the wrong thing. That is not what Sabbath is for. My meditation is going to be about how we think of the physical need and how we want God to help us with our physical needs. And I'm going to think a little bit more about the forgiveness of sins, the spiritual needs that God wants to do for us. And my prayer is that he does forgive us our sins. He forgives me my sins. I can certainly overlook the spiritual needs I have. And what I'm going to share with someone else is the fact that God cares mostly about us being forgiven. All right, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember to visit the website. There's only the blog post there now. I'm going to do more later. But I think first on my list is getting up a list of the commentaries and the tools I use to do this podcast. I read about 10 different commentaries. Some of them are very light and some of them are very more historic and some of them are very dense, but I should get you a list so you know what it is I'm looking at. Thank you so much for listening.